Health Connect is Toma Health's intranet site. The site can be accessed from any computer at Toma Health by opening an internet browser. This site is full of important information pertinent to Toma Health. Policies, phone numbers, important updates, and the most up-to-date news can all be found on Health Connect. The Health Connect site as well as policies will be referenced throughout this presentation. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act was enacted in 1996 to stipulate how healthcare information should be protected from fraud and theft. Here at Toma Health, all employees, students, and providers are responsible for protecting the privacy and security of protected health information. Items with patient identifiers should not be removed from the facility. These identifiers include, but are not limited to, patient name, birth date, medical record number, demographic information, dates of hospitalizations or visits, or anything else that could be used to identify a patient. Medical records should be accessed only on a need-to-know basis. If you are not involved in the care of the patient, the medical records should not be accessed. Assure that you lock your workstation when walking away from it and log off at the end of the day. All names and passwords are your own and should not be shared with anyone else. Social media is a hot topic and can easily cause breaches in HIPAA. Never post anything on social media about patients or work. Even if you are not sharing specifics about the situation, individuals may still be identifiable. Healthcare workers should keep their personal and professional lives separate. Interacting with a patient online could result in PHI inadvertently being exchanged in a public domain. Assess your behavior while at work. Ask yourself, who can hear or see what I am doing? Avoid talking about patients in public areas. Place papers with patient identifiers in confidential waste bins. It is each employee's responsibility to maintain the confidentiality of the information they use. Toma Health desires to strengthen patient confidence by assuring that the care provided is fair and responsive to patient needs. Toma Health encourages patients to take an active role in improving patient health. We value the importance of a strong relationship between patients and families and healthcare professionals. All patients and their visitors have the right to considerate, safe, and respectful care that supports dignity and is free of mental, physical, sexual, and verbal abuse, neglect, and exploitation. See Policy Patient Bill of Rights and Responsibilities 100 GEN 06 for more information. You deserve a safe work environment, free from intimidation, hostility, or offensive behaviors from managers, coworkers, visitors, or patients. Toma Health is committed to providing a work environment that is free of discrimination and unlawful harassment. Actions, words, jokes, or comments that are offensive in any way will not be tolerated. The victim does not have to be the person harassed, but anyone affected by the offensive conduct. If you feel you are being harassed, report it right away. Tobacco is prohibited on all Toma Health campus grounds. Weapons are prohibited on all Toma Health campus grounds. Here at Toma Health, we no longer color code emergency alerts, but instead we practice clear text emergency alerts. If an emergency is occurring, you will hear an overhead announcement that will state one of the following. Fire alert, emergency operations, severe weather, medical emergency, abduction, missing person, hazardous materials, security, urgent response, equipment failure. Response to these alerts varies from department to department. Locate and review your department-specific green emergency binder for all emergency alert plans. Medical emergencies are responded to by the code team to streamline response and care. If you find someone that is unresponsive, press the code button on the wall in inpatient areas, or if you are in a public area, shout for help. Overhead paging is available by dialing star 80 from any Toma Health phone. Assure that you state your paging a medical emergency along with your location three times in a row to assure that your message is audible to all needing to respond. 
AEDs are located by the public elevators on the first, second, and third floors and are on the first floor near the specialty clinic and rehab services area. When you are in your department, assure that you know the location of the closest AED. Only use equipment that you have been trained to use. If the equipment is not working or is not in good shape, tell a staff member so they can enter a work order for the maintenance department. Assure that you are only using lifting equipment that you have been trained to use. Avoid any heavy lifting. Ask for help if needed. All staff at Toma Health are responsible to work to help to eliminate patient falls. Nursing staff complete regular assessments on patients to determine their level of fall risk and has ways of communicating this level of risk to others. An illuminated yellow light in the hall indicates the patient is at risk for falling. A yellow band on the patient's arm also is a communication tool for this risk. If you are caring for or see a patient at risk for falls exhibiting risky behavior, stay with them and keep them safe until medical staff is available to help with the situation. Security at Toma Health is important for our patients, visitors, and employees. Assure that you are wearing your name badge visibly at any time you are in the facility. Leave valuables at home and report any suspicious activity, such as loitering, any entry into secure areas by those that are not supposed to be entering into those areas, if any secured doors have been propped open, any inappropriate behaviors, actual threats, or violence. Security staff is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week at extension 8770. Every employee is responsible for understanding how to prevent fires and how to respond to fire should they occur in the building. Some ways to prevent fire include avoiding the use of extension cords, following our no smoking policy, and practicing good general housekeeping, disposing of boxes, keeping your area free of clutter, and disposing of trash and garbage cans. Do not store items within 18 inches of sprinkler heads as to not impede the flow of water. Report any fire hazards that you may see. If a fire occurs, an announcement will be made overhead of the location of the fire and other instructions. Patients, visitors, and staff should be evacuated horizontally to the next safe smoke compartment. Smoke compartment maps are located near all of the elevators and in your department green emergency binder. Assure that you view this binder for specifics on your department fire emergency plan. Remember, if there is a fire, to race, rescue, alarm, contain, and evacuate or extinguish. Fire extinguishers are located throughout the Toma Health Campus. Assure when you get to your department that you know where your nearest fire extinguisher is located. The fire extinguishers in the cabinets are class A, B, C and will handle most kinds of fires in the building. Assure that if you are using a fire extinguisher that you are only using it if the fire is small and you know that you are using the correct kind of extinguisher. Also, remember to pass if you are using a fire extinguisher. Pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side while extinguishing the fire. Toma Health is committed to high ethical standards, sound business practices, fair treatment, and compliance with applicable laws and regulations. You help us to achieve this. If you have any concerns regarding the safety or quality of care being provided at any facility within Toma Health, please contact the facility's quality and compliance officer, Shelley Eggstead. Toma Health's compliance program is designed to keep the organization in compliance with legal requirements by deterring and detecting violations of the law. Potential violations may include any form of harassment, stealing of any Toma Health supplies, not billing for something, documenting information prior to it occurring, 
accessing medical records without a need to know, making false statements in medical records for better reimbursement, or even not reporting one of these violations if you are aware that it is occurring. Failure to report can lead to disciplinary actions. It is the staff's duty to report any violations of compliance. If you see something, say something. Reporting can be accomplished by contacting our Quality and Compliance Officer, Shelley Eggstead, or by contacting the Compliance Hotline. The Compliance Hotline can be used anonymously. Medicare Part C and D are forms of a health plan and prescription drug program available to Medicare beneficiaries. Every year, billions of dollars are improperly spent because of fraud, waste, and abuse. Combating this is everyone's responsibility. Fraud is knowingly and willfully executing or attempting to execute a scheme to defraud any health care benefit program or to obtain any of the money or property owned by or under the custody or control of any health care benefit program. The healthcare fraud statute makes it a criminal offense to knowingly and willfully execute a scheme to defraud a healthcare benefit program. Healthcare fraud is punishable by imprisonment for up to 10 years. It is also subject to criminal fines of up to $250,000. In other words, fraud is intentionally submitting false information to the government or a government contractor to get money or a benefit. Some examples of fraud are billing for services not furnished or billing for supplies not provided billing for appointments that the patient did not keep or non-existent prescriptions. Altering forms, records, or receipts to receive a higher payment is also an example of fraud. Waste includes practices that directly or indirectly result in unnecessary costs to the Medicare program, such as overusing services. Waste is generally not considered to be caused by criminally negligent actions, but rather by the misuse of resources. Examples of waste include conducting excessive office visits or writing excessive prescriptions, prescribing more medications than necessary for the treatment of a specific condition, or ordering excessive laboratory testing. Abuse includes actions that may, directly or indirectly, result in unnecessary costs to the Medicare program. Abuse involves payment for items or services when there is not legal entitlement to that payment and the provider has not knowingly or intentionally misrepresented facts to obtain payment. Some examples of abuse are billing for unnecessary medical services, billing for a brand name drug when generics are dispensed, or charging excessively for services or supplies. Upcharging or unbundling of fees to make them more expensive is another example of abuse. You may be asking yourself how this applies. Remember, it is everyone's responsibility to combat this improper use of Medicare dollars. Here at Toma Health, we ask that you look for suspicious activity. If you see something, say something. Conduct yourself in an ethical manner. Ensure accurate and timely data and billing. And know what fraud, waste, and abuse means and how to report. Bloodborne pathogens are transmitted through blood, body fluids, or tissue and can cause disease. The most common bloodborne pathogens are hepatitis B and C, which are both viruses that damage the liver, and human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. This virus attacks the immune system. Employees can be exposed to these pathogens by splash, spray, or contact with your nose, eyes, mouth, or cuts on the skin. They can also be spread through sexual transmission. Wear appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment, such as gloves, face shields, CPR barrier devices, gowns, or shoe covers to help protect yourself and decrease the risk of an exposure. If cleaning up a spill of a bloodborne pathogen, obtain a spill kit from the fire extinguisher cases located throughout Toma Health. Open the kit and put on the enclosed PPE. Use the powder to soak up any liquids and paper towels to wipe up any contaminants. Dispose of all materials in the included red biohazard bag. Disinfect the area with a disinfectant. Always be sure to read the label of the product you are using to assure you are allowing the product to remain wet or sit undisturbed long enough to allow it to disinfect the area.
assure that you wash your hands after cleaning up a spill. If you have been exposed to a bloodborne pathogen, first, wash the affected area with soap and water or flush mucous membranes, for example your eyes, with water as soon as possible for five minutes. Eye wash stations are located throughout Toma Health. Completing this first step of washing the affected area reduces risk that the bloodborne pathogen will infect the employee or the person that has been exposed. Secondly, report to the emergency department. At the emergency department, you will receive a medical evaluation from one of our providers and nurses, and also treatment of the exposure if necessary, along with a plan for follow-up. Thirdly, we would want you to fill out a clarity or incident report on our Health Connect so that we can monitor the situation and also to notify your manager. We all know about the growing threat of antimicrobial resistance and have seen the headlines about superbugs and nightmare bacteria. Unfortunately, this threat is very real, now more than ever. It's critical that we work together to contain these drug-resistant pathogens and the infections they cause. Keeping our hands clean is one of the most important ways to prevent the spread of infections. Every time we enter the patient zone, we can get dangerous germs on our hands and spread them to ourselves or to other patients. Sometimes we don't clean our hands as often as we should, not because we mean to do harm, but because it's a daunting task. Some of us might have to do it a hundred times a day. It takes dedication, mindfulness, and time. Our patients' lives depend on it. Let's applaud the efforts and improvements we've already made. Increases in hand hygiene adherence have led to decreases in healthcare associated infections. At the same time, we know there is still room for improvement. We can all do better. Our clean hands count, now more than ever. Hand hygiene is accomplished by cleaning your hands by washing with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Cleaning your hands reduces the spread of potentially deadly germs to patients and reduces the risk of healthcare provider infection caused by germs from the patient. See the screen for five moments of hand hygiene, but also remember to wash your hands before preparing or eating food, before touching your eyes, nose, or mouth, before and after changing wound dressings or bandages, after using the restroom, after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing, and after touching hospital surfaces such as bed rails, bedside tables, doorknobs, remote controls, or the phone. Technique matters when cleaning your hands. It only counts if you are using the right amount the right way. The soap and sanitizer dispensers are programmed to dispense the appropriate amount of soap or sanitizer needed to cover all surfaces of your hands and allow enough friction while rubbing the surfaces to allow the product to work. At times, it is appropriate to only use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. These times would be immediately before touching a patient, before performing an aseptic task or handling invasive medical devices, before moving from work on a soiled body site to a clean body site on the same patient, after touching a patient or the patient's immediate environment, after contact with blood, body fluids, or contaminated surfaces, immediately after glove removal. Other situations require soap and water to be used to effectively clean your hands. These situations would be when hands are visibly soiled, after caring for a person with known or suspected infectious diarrhea, or after known or suspected exposure to spores, for example, a C. difficile outbreak. The images on the right hand of this screen are isolation signage used at Toma Health. If an individual is ill and needs special care precautions, these signs are placed outside of their doors. 
The signage shows the required PPE necessary to enter the room along with any other precautions. The signs are magnetic and also have information on the backside. Here at Toma Health, we place patients in contact precautions, contact plus precautions, droplet precautions, airborne precautions, and protective or neutropenic precautions. If you ever have any questions about the requirements to enter these rooms, please ask a staff member. The overuse of antibiotics or using the wrong antibiotic can lead to antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics should not be prescribed for viral infections. Multidrug resistant organisms can occur when organisms are resistant to many different kinds of antibiotics. Following the precaution signs and practicing good hand washing can help to decrease these organisms. Catheter-associated urinary tract infection, or CAUTI, are infections that patients can acquire when they have a catheter in place. At Toma Health, we monitor these numbers and only place catheters in those patients that require them. Early removal and proper care and maintenance decrease the risk of acquiring an infection. If you are handling patient catheters, assure that you are always using standard precautions and keeping the collection bag lower than the level of the bladder and off of the floor. All staff that handle catheters help us to avoid CAUTI. Tuberculosis is a disease that typically affects the lungs caused by a bacteria. This is generally spread through the air when an infected person sneezes, coughs, speaks, or sings for a period of time. The person breathing in the TB infected air can become infected. Employees of a healthcare facility have a higher risk of getting TB than the general public. The risk requires education on how to protect yourself. All patients at Toma Health are asked screening questions to determine unrecognized TB. If a patient is suspected to have TB, they are placed in a special room with special signage. Protect yourself from a TB exposure by coughing and sneezing into your sleeve to prevent the spread of germs and encouraging patients with a cough to wear a mask. Hazard communication is an important concern in healthcare facilities. Employees may work with chemicals as part of their job. Communicating risks regarding these chemicals reduces the risk of workers being exposed. Safety data sheets are available on all chemicals kept at Toma Health and can be located on the Health Connect page under Quick Links. Once on the site, you can search for any chemical and open a safety data sheet with all of the pertinent information needed, such as hazards, possible ways of exposure, symptoms of an exposure, personal protective equipment required while using the chemical, and the actions to take if a person is exposed to the chemical in order to minimize harm. All chemicals used in the facility are labeled. If a hazard material is spilled, only clean it up if you were trained to do so. Otherwise, contact your manager for help with the situation. For more information regarding hazard communications, or if you have questions on the chemicals used in your department, please see your manager. Seven types of waste are generated at Toma Health. Solid waste includes everyday garbage, paper toweling, food waste, etc. Trash is bagged to prevent leakage and containers are emptied regularly. Infectious or biohazard waste is placed in red containers. This is solid waste that has the potential to transmit disease. Lab waste, full sharps containers, human tissue, and blood and body fluids that are drippable, pourable, squeezable, or flakeable are disposed of in these containers. Sharps containers should be used to dispose of needles, lancets, scalpels, breakable containers, or glass products. Containers must be sealed when they reach the fill line and placed in the biohazardous waste for pickup and disposal. Never reach into a sharps container. Chemotherapy waste is contaminated with trace chemotherapy drugs, such as syringes, gloves, or empty IV bags. This is bagged in yellow bags and kept separate from all other waste. Hazardous waste is dangerous or potentially harmful to our health and the environment. Any waste that is ignitable, reactive, corrosive, or toxic should be disposed of in the black hazardous waste containers 
An example of this kind of waste is alcohol hand sanitizer. Special waste that is categorized as P waste are hazardous to human health and the environment, and they are very toxic. P waste at Toma Health consists of nicotine patches and packaging, and Coumadin or Warfarin tablets and their packaging. These items must be disposed of in the P waste containers located in the medication rooms. Pharmaceutical waste does not have to be sorted except for P waste and can be disposed of in the black pharmaceutical waste bucket. Some items are able to go into the regular trash to save on the cost associated with disposal. Empty vials, empty glass bottles, or IV bags that are empty with patient identifiers removed can all go into the regular trash. Vials with partial doses, however, should be placed into the pharmaceutical waste bucket. Toma Health has a commitment to the environment and does not put narcotics down the drain. Special cactus waste containers are located in medication areas in our clinical areas. All narcotic waste must be placed in this disposal container. All recyclable waste, including aluminum containers, corrugated paper or cardboard, plastic, glass, magazines, newspapers, office paper that does not include PHI, and steel containers are recyclable and should be placed in recycling containers or areas. Universal waste includes common items which are considered hazardous waste because of their chemical content, but pose a relatively low risk when handled in a normal manner. Some examples of this waste are batteries, antifreeze, and fluorescent light bulbs. Radiation is found everywhere. Everyone has some level of exposure to radiation because of naturally occurring radioactive sources. Individuals working around a radiation source have the potential to receive added radiation called an occupational dose. The risk of radiation exposure can never be completely eliminated because of naturally occurring radiation. An X-ray unit is a source of ionizing radiation whenever the beam is being produced and an X-ray is being taken. Our goal is to keep radiation exposure as low as reasonably achievable. General safety measures and radiation protection involve time, distance, and shielding. When you decrease the dose rate or the period of time of an exposure, the total dose of radiation has a corresponding decrease. Technology allows the staff to distance themselves and leave the room when an image is being taken and also for the radiation to be shielded in a steel tube so it is directable. Shielding is also accomplished by wearing lead aprons. MRI equipment is an important diagnostic tool that gives detailed views of soft tissues, such as the brain, spinal cord, and muscles. MRI equipment is not a source of radiation, but it can be hazardous to staff or patients. The following precautions should be followed when you are working near MRI equipment. Remember that the MRI magnet is always on, whether or not the equipment is in use. Do not take anything into the room that is metallic and magnetic. Any metal that is magnetic will be pulled into the unit, which could cause life-threatening effects to anyone in the room. Use a hand magnet to test any metal objects that may be magnetic. Do not go into the room if you have a pacemaker, and always check with the MRI technologist before entering the room if there is any possibility that there is a metallic object in your body or attached to your body in a way that it cannot be removed. Policy 500 RAD 011 MRI Patient and General Safety is available for review for more details. Any employee that works in situations that might include radiation exposure have the right to receive instructions about the safe use of radiation and its potential health effects, to accompany inspectors during inspection of the program, to request in writing an inspection by the regulating agency, and or to receive a record of annual radiation exposures. If you have any concerns regarding radiation procedures at Toma Health, please contact your department manager. The Joint Commission and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid have standards related to restraint use. They focus on limiting the use of restraints and seclusion to only emergency situations when a person is at imminent risk of harming themselves or others, when non-physical safety measures have been ineffective, 
or when safety requires an immediate physical response. When restraints are used, it must be clinically justified and accompanied by documented evidence that other treatment options and alternatives had been attempted and failed. The restraint order must be in writing and all staff must receive education about restraints. Only those that have received competency validation are allowed to apply the restraint and make patient assessments while they are wearing the restraints. Restraint orders have time limits for violent or self-destructive behavior restraints. Those 17 years of age and older wear restraints for four hours, children nine to 16 years of age, two hours, and children younger than nine, one hour. Some examples of alternatives to restraints are medications or pain relief, if appropriate, supervised activity, diversional activities, calming music, redirection, etc. If these alternatives fail and orders for restraints are necessary, they must include time limits, the type of restraint ordered, either a physical limb restraint or a chemical restraint, the reasoning for the restraints, and criteria for early release from the restraint. If the time limit is up, a continuation order will be needed if restraints continue to be necessary. Patients are to be monitored and assessed 15 minutes after initiation of the restraint, then every hour until restraints are removed. Complete and accurate documentation of restraint orders, application, and assessments are essential to the patient's care. Please see policy 500 GEN 019 Restraints for more information. The United States is more diverse today than at any other time in history. Baby boomers are aging, more females are in the workforce, and approximately 58 million people speak a language other than English in the home. As the United States becomes more racially and ethnically diverse, there is a need for healthcare workers to be knowledgeable about how to serve people with different values, health beliefs, and alternative perspectives. With so much diversity, this creates many opportunities and challenges in healthcare delivery. Failure to understand cultural differences can lead to miscommunication, inappropriate diagnosis and treatment, and patient frustration. Diversity involves both acceptance and respect. Valuing diversity requires you to recognize that each individual is unique and to work at understanding the differences among patients, visitors, and coworkers. Here at Toma Health, we take the learn approach to communicating to allow the patient and their cultural beliefs to be part of their care plan. The LEARN acronym stands for Listen, Explain, Acknowledge, Recommend, and Negotiate an Agreement. Personal appearance is important at Doma Health as it has a direct impact on the image of our hospital. The way employees look, dress, and act are vitally important to Toma Health. Policy 300 GEN 049 was created to further define professional image standards. Refer to the policy for appropriate dress. All clothing should be clean and neat. Clinical staff must wear the scrub color required by policy and listed in this slide. IDs should be worn at all times and in plain view of patients and visitors. It is not acceptable to wear your ID on your hip. IDs should be worn above the torso midline at all times. The ways in which we communicate with our coworkers, visitors, and patients can shape one's overall experience at Toma Health. We use the AIDIT model when communicating with both our internal and external customers, both our coworkers and our patients. AIDIT is a concise way of communication that reduces anxiety and establishes trust. It helps to improve compliance and delivers better outcomes for our patients and it also creates a safe, healthier environment to both receive care and work. It helps to build loyalty, both for our patients and our coworkers. The AIDIT acronym is broke down into five letters. Acknowledge is smiling, making eye contact, and greeting someone. Introduce is simply introducing yourself and your role. Duration is explaining how long something will take. If you are unsure, do not make promises that you are not able to keep. 
Explanation tells why we are doing this, what someone should expect, or what will happen. Thank you allows us to show appreciation for waiting or for trusting us with their care. To provide a positive closing, ask, is there anything else I can do for you today? SBARD is another way that we communicate important information with one another. The situation is a concise statement of the problem. Background is the pertinent and brief information related to the situation. The assessment is what you found or what you think, and the recommendation is what you want. The decision is an agreement upon the next steps. This communication technique is an easy to remember concrete mechanism that easily frames critical conversations. Clarity is our incident reporting and tracking system at Toma Health. Clarity reports can be input from the Health Connect site. Any concerns regarding quality of care, compliance, and or patient safety should be entered on this site. The tracking allows administration to monitor for trends and data to create needed and necessary change. If you are not sure if you should file your incident on the Clarity system, always remember, when in doubt, fill it out.